Welcome back to the GDScript Fundamental Tutorial Series. In this episode, we will be covering naming conventions. So what exactly is a naming convention? Naming conventions are a set of rules for choosing the character sequence to be used for identifiers, which denote variables, types, functions, and other entities in source code and documentation. One thing I notice about beginners is that they have problems with variable naming. What I mean by this is that beginners don't spend quite enough time on naming variables or functions. Sometimes beginners use single characters to name their variables. And while single characters were okay back when computers had small RAM, when there were consequences with giving variable big names, that is no longer the issue. So how exactly can we go about creating good variable and function names? Well, to start, the intention of the variable or function should be clear from its name. One thing to avoid are using comments to explain your code. If you have to write a comment to make the purpose of the variable or function clear, it's best to start rethinking a new name. Let's go ahead and take a look at bad variable names. Over here, you can see we have a variable x assigned the literal integer value 100. And on top of that, you can see above our code that we have a comment that says represents player help. This is not good use of writing code, as now you have to read two lines of code, the comment and the variable declaration. Also keep in mind that reading the variable x throughout the script will cause confusion, simply due to the fact that you don't know what x represents unless you go back to reading the comment. Let's go ahead and improve the state of our code. As you can see here, instead of naming our variable x, we've decided to rename our variable player health. On top of that, we were able to get rid of the comment because the name of our variable lets you know what this variable's intent is, which is to contain the value for our player health. As you can see here, we have only one line of code to read. And on top of that, player health as a name makes the variable self-explanatory. If we see this in our script, we know we are doing something to the player's health. However, what if I told you there was a way to even improve our current code? Let's go ahead and take a look at that. As you can see here, we've added a data type to our variable. In this case, we are limiting the scope of our variable to only taking integers. Now when someone looks at our code, that coder will understand that the player health only deals with integers and of course all the mathematical operations intended for integers. One thing to keep in mind when naming your variables is to avoid writing data types in the name. This is due to the fact that if you decide to change the variable data type in the future, you will cause yourself a lot of headache. Let's take a look at this example. In this example, we have a variable int health assigned the literal integer value 100. Maybe a user accidentally changes the data type you can possibly be misguided by other users on the data type if the data type changes in the course of the game. What I mean by that is that even though you have the variable int health, what if in the future they decide to opt in an integer for a string? Well, now you have to not only change the variable name, but you have to propagate the name changes throughout your code. And that's not something you should be looking forward to. Instead of opting to put a data type in your name, just go ahead and declare it as a specific data type for your variable. In this case, you can see here, we've changed the variable name to health and we've declared an integer value to our health. The intent is clear, causes error if a user accidentally performs an operation that changes the data type as well. As you can see here, we've decided to add a data type to our variable and basically added type security to our variable. One thing I suggest to make life easier on your coding adventures is using names that can be easily searched in your coding editor of choice. Let's take a look at an example. As you can see here, we have a variable x1, and that's not very searchable. On top of that, the name of our variable doesn't even explain the intent of our code. As you can see here, instead of x1 and y1, we've opted to name our variables width and height. That's a little better. At least we know that the variable contains something to do with width and height, but that's just me. You should use whatever you are comfortable with. But no matter what, you need to decide a standard for names. The way you make names should be consistent across the board. For example, consider using camel case for variables, functions, and classes. Consider using all uppercase for constants. As an example of camel case, let's take a look at this code right here, player height. Player height is camel case. And basically what camel case is, is that every word after the first word will have the first letter capitalized. 
In this case, we have a lowercase p, but an uppercase h. I like to use camel case naming convention for functions as well. As you notice here, we have a lowercase g and a capital P and H. Moving on to constants, I prefer to use uppercase. In this case, every letter is uppercase no matter how many words are in the name. This is to make sure that constants can be visually seen in your code compared to variables and other elements. With class names, I prefer to use Pasco case. Every word, including the first word, will have the first letter capitalized. As you can see here, we have a capital M and a capital P. These are just tips and preferences I like to use. However, feel free to pick whatever naming convention you feel comfortable with. Just make sure you stay consistent throughout your entire code base. That's all I have for you in this episode. I look forward to seeing you in the next.